Right, so we landed in what I would say is probably the most crowded and busy corner of uh, Gamescom, the uh, eSports corner. And we caught up with Kang here, and when we got here, you were engaged in a uh, game. You were playing hot game against some fans. Could you just tell us a little bit what, what, what was going on there? Uh, well, we had a long line of people waiting, and some people actually played yesterday, and they came back to, uh, so they got be get better at the game. And one of the kids just asked me if I can play against them to see where he ranked among the, you know, the people who actually made the game. And, uh, well, I, I, I beat him barely, though. I think he's freaking awesome for a guy who just played like one match a day before. But I'm not one of the best guys in the office. Like, I'm actually one of the worst guys to, to be playing against. So uh, if you play against the best guy in your office, then he'll have a real problem. So far, until you, until you unleash the people on the game, right? And yeah, then no, until, yeah, definitely. I can't wait to just sort of get this game out into the public and really see you know, what is the best player plays like. Because right now, we're in, even among our office, there's really amazing players, but you know, once you get into public hand, there's going to be some crazy strategy that we never even thought of. So what are people getting their hands on here at, at the show? Uh, it's just a basic uh, sort of team deathmatch. Uh, we have another more complex mode called Siege Mode, but it's a, bit, it's a bit too complicated to have demo here at this time. And yeah, so people just get their sort of eight minutes and get the feel of the weapon, the movement, things like that, yeah. So. Um Touching on that, uh, what, what's the experience been like? What, what kind of reactions have you been getting? Oh man, it's been so awesome. I mean, it's kind of scary because ever since we released our first video, we had great feedback, like a sort of like this uh, viral effect to the to the video. But you know, when that happened, people get a sort of um, they they hype up the game inside their head so much, their expectation is too high. So when you actually let them play, I was afraid that be you know it's less than what they were expecting. But people seem to really enjoy it. They they come off saying, you know, basically it's better than what they thought the game would be. So it's, it's really exciting. We love it. So we've all played lots of, of mech games over the years. But what do you feel is like key to sort of getting that right feeling of, of a heavy, big thing that's still very quick and agile? How do you, how do you sort of get the, the, that right mech feeling? That's actually one of the most difficult parts so far. I mean, we got it down pretty good initially, but we're still t uh, tinkering with that. We definitely want to capture that weighty feeling of like mech warriors, let's say. Well, our mechs are a bit smaller. They're only about, I would say, 20 foot. They're not like a couple of story buildings. So they can be a bit more agile. And so it's a combination between the, this old game called Virtual One, the arcade with the two joysticks, and Mech Warrior, somewhere is our game. So we're, when you walk around, you're very heavy and lumbering, but then you have the sort of jetpack to allow you to side dash, or like an anime style side dash, and boost forward. You can turn, turn 180, you can jetpack around. So, but at the same time, everything is tied to fuel, so you have to really manage it. And you know, that's what's fun about mech games, I think, is sort of the management of like the heat, the fuels, you know, the sort of items you're using, things like that. So the games you're mentioning, are quite a bit sort of in, in the past. So sort of, it feels a little bit like the, the mech genre has been on a, on a little bit of a slow burn these, these last few years. And I think a lot of people sort of reacted to Hawken in sort of the, like the salvation of that, that kind of game. And it sort of brings us back. Do you feel, do you feel that yourself? Uh, well, definitely we, we feel it now, but when we first released it, we didn't really expect it. We were just fans of the old mech games. And, you know, as an indie team initially, we just want to make something that wasn't being made in the public because then we didn't want to really compete against the big companies out there. You know, we, we started out with just four guys initially. So we chose to pick a genre that was popular back in the day, but sort of die out. So we took what the formula that was successful, but we changed it up a little bit to, you know, to match with the, the, the modern audience. And even for myself back in the day, I really enjoyed the experience of driving a mech, but I never really felt like it was fun for me, even back in the day. So we're trying to make a game that's not just feeling like you drive a mech, but the fun factor has to be there. So we're not so technical, but not so arcadey either is where we are going to be for, for Hawking. So you, you touched on, on the, the beginnings of the project. How has the whole journey been like and then sort of where are you at right now? 
Well, it's definitely, uh, this is way beyond what we're expecting. I mean, we started out with four guys just wanting to do like a downloadable title, quick, you know, one year project and, and call it done kind of thing, move on to the next thing. And it's still got that snowball after the first video. I think on our first video, we had nine guys, six guys and three interns. Now we're at 21 people. And, you know, we build up a whole publishing branch called, called Media to support the game. And it's going to be a first, our um, first title for the company. And it's really exciting to see the reaction of people. And was, everything is way beyond what we're expecting. So we're, we're very thankful for, for the fans. And what's the roadmap ahead? To basically launch on December 12th and continue to support it as long as the community still plays it. So that's what's nice about free to play for the indie for like an indie developer is you can start out the game kind of small and grow it over time. You don't necessarily have to finish everything. You know, there should be no bugs at all, but if there are, we'll fix it. Whatever people don't like, we'll take out. So it's, I like the direct sort of communication between the dev and the community. So do you have a lot of ideas that for, for new modes and things that you'd like to add over the years? Uh, yep, there's actually too many. So everyone in the office is pitching their ideas of what they want to do next. So we got to sort of narrow it down and really pick, you know, test things out and see what's really fun to do. But yeah, we definitely have a lot of content already, even way more than what pe people are seeing here. There's a lot more maps we haven't seen yet, a lot more mechs and weapons that we haven't reviewed. So it should be really exciting. When, uh, we you touched a little on the, on the mode that you, were, that you didn't want to show off here because it's too ca complicated. Could you briefly outline that and what, what players can expect from that? It's basically a very uh, team play objective mode and it involves uh, sending a battleship to the enemy's base to destroy, to the, destroy the, the, their base. So it's sort of like a tank escort mission, but you start out collecting resources. So you're like the little guy in StarCraft collecting crystal, it's similar to that. And then once you have enough resources, it will launch a battleship to the other enemy's base, but they can shoot it down. You know, they shoot it down, all the energy falls and they collect it, bring back to their base and launch their battleships. And you can actually launch two battleships at the same time, so it's, it gets pretty crazy. And it's really fun to get the sort of teamwork involved, and it, it requires a lot of hex set communication, things like that, to really win the battle. So it requires a lot more bronze than, I mean, a lot more brains than just bronze, yeah. It sounds like you, you have to think both attack and defense at the same time. Yeah, yeah. If you just rush into the battle by yourself, being Rambo style, you definitely would not win that, that game. Even in a mech. Yeah, even in a mech, because everybody's in the mech, so. <laughs> So thank you very much for the talk, and uh, hopefully you can beat up some more fans back oh, here yeah, later. Yeah. We actually have a competition today uh, at the ESL at 12 o'clock, I mean 2 o'clock, so first place get like a graphic card. So I think we're picking up the best player of each of these rounds and round them up for the 2 o'clock show. It should be really fun. Sounds great. Right, thank, thank you very you much again. for your time. Yeah, thank you so much.